what will work we'll have to wait and watch mita prakash javed ansari with us uh, as a prime minister's road show in puri does it also become existential for a few who are in the poll fray in this phase phase 5 be it in maharashtra be it in uttar pradesh be it in odisha smita prakash Uh, good morning to the, to you and to the viewers of uh, News 18. And uh, like I always say when I come on your channel during election, sir, this channel per suniye election gyan. Do your madan or phir jalpan. <laughs> so now 49 seats. Uh, I like the visuals that you're putting out there. Um, uh, Puri is very interesting uh, uh, with the, the prime minister campaigning for Sambit Patra. Many of us are familiar with him. Uh, just because he's been a regular on TV channels, uh, and uh, he's worked hard in that place. He's he sat there. He's moved away from television debates for quite a few years now. Uh, he lost to Pinaki Mishra last time. Uh, this time Pinaki didn't get a seat, and then uh, didn't get a ticket. Sorry. And then uh, you saw that uh, the Congress candidate uh, pulled out. So from a triangular contest, it became a bipolar contest. Uh, Puri very important uh, to uh, the, the BJD. They've done the corridor, the temple corridor, similar to what happened in Kashi. Uh, so it's very close to uh, Navin Babu. Uh, for him, it's important that uh, the people of Puri uh, uh, put their faith again in him. Um, but uh, it, Puri goes beyond just electoral uh, uh, battles. It's it's a historic uh, town, and uh, both the BJP and the uh, uh, BJD would like to win from here. And it's uh, as you quite rightly put, it's an existential crisis also for the BJD because you have this juggernaut, and I'm using the word very mm -hmm. carefully when I say juggernaut and Orissa. Um, you have that rolling of the BJP uh, down the streets of Orissa. Uh, the Navin Babu would like to break all records and get voted again uh, to power. Uh, but uh, and Pandian, who you called an outsider, and uh, Rahul said that not so much an outsider. The, the thing is that he's a very reticent um, bureaucrat and for him to get out of that shell and become a politician hasn't been very easy. Um, he's tried but you know the, the, the shadow that Patnai casts is so large uh, that anybody would fall short uh, when it comes to it. So he's very much in the Guru Shishya mold where he's asking for votes on behalf of Naveen Babu. Um, Naveen Babu, I feel, is somewhat like in 2004 what Mr. Bajpai was. Much loved, but there is a sense among the people that he may not be that aggressive doer, that aggressive a person that is needed to pull the state out from a developing and slow moving uh, economy to be out there right up front. They need a lot of development in that state. Uriyas by and large are kind of quieter, softer, kinder, gentler uh, people. They don't want to punish uh, Naveen Babu. They adore him. He's very popular. But there's also a realization that five more years is not probably what we're going to get from Naveen Babu. It will be Mr. Pandian halfway through. Hmm. So will that have an impact? We'll have to wait and watch. Uh, existential in Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra. We'll come to that in just a bit. But Javed Ansari, uh, your thoughts on 49 seats in phase five. And uh, where do you believe the BJP will have to perhaps defend more? Or uh, do you see a chance for them in Odisha? Well, it's obvious that the BJP has to uh, to defend most of this. It won 13 seats last time. Mm -hmm. Barring rivalry, it won all the seats that are going to poll in UP. So it's very important for them to do as well as they did the last time around. As far as Urissa is concerned, I do believe that we are, what we are witnessing is perhaps the last of Mr. Naveen Patnaik's reign there. Naveen Patnaik's help uh, has... Uh, it is not mm. what it used to be and in, in he's 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 really laboring hard he's really laboring hard he doesn't step out he's finding it difficult most of his campaigning is now done through that uh, uh, limousine of his mm. he will ground reports seem to suggest that he will he will certainly do a, a lot better in the assembly elections than in the Lok Sabha elections. In the Lok Sabha elections, it's the BJP that will make make the gains. And Sambit Patra, I must say, has has changed. And it's been, you know, he he realized the last time around that you can't parachute and then 
suddenly expect just because you appear on TV that people will start voting for you. So he went, spent the last five years, he's done the hard yards. He's put in the hard yards and he's hoping to to reap the dividends this time. And it's it's remarkable how things have changed in Ursa. I used to know Naveen Babu's father, uh, Biju Patnaik, very well. And what a personality he was. Yes. I mean, he was he was a doyen. He was an icon. But he never enjoyed the kind of success that Naveen Babu had done. And at that time, I mean, if you if you ask somebody or if you even mention the fact that he is going to be the political legacy, hmm. he is going to inherit the political legacy of his father, people would have laughed you off the table. But look what Naveen, how Naveen has transformed himself and he is now proved to be perhaps the most successful and long-lasting chief minister that Orissa has had. His father never won so many consecutive terms. He used to, off hmm. and on, off and on. But if you... As personalities go, they are, they are as different as chalk and cheese. But look at the kind of success. If if we were, were betting people, none of us in the beginning would have bet on Naveen uh, outdoing his father. But he's done it. Correct. I don't know much about Mr. Pandian. Hmm. And that, we'll be lucky to wait that's and see why, That's why many believe that if Naveen Babu could, then why can't Pandian? So that that's another question, but that also will take time. It's the, because the political scenario situations on ground are far different than what they were at the time when Naveen Babu came and he he parachuted literally into the seat and replaced Biju Patnaik there. But what he achieved for himself is credible, like you said, Javed sir. But the fact is that uh, can Bandian do the same? Coming back to this existential aspect, uh, and I'm just going to bring it into the studio with Zaka and Rahul and then take it forward with the two of you. The, the aspect is BJD in Odisha with the Trinamool Congress in Bengal, mm. Lok Sabha wise and also their national narrative. Right. Uddhav Bala Sahib Thakre, Uddhav Thakre, Sharad Pawar and of course if you look at the Congress in Uttar Pradesh. Is this a, an existential phase for all of them? Is this very, very important? Well, Especially you know, when we look when at Mumbai to, today. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it the to, focus to... Yeah. When it comes to uh, Mr. Patnaik, and the BJD, I wouldn't call it an existential crisis. I think it's a little early to say that it's going to just go off the map unless there is something really churning in the state. I think it is a point of inflection. It's an inflection point. It's a point where obviously Mr. Patnaik has decided to go with Mr. Pandyan as his successor. Can he galvanize the party and the cadre around Mr. Pandyan? That really is the challenge here. In any succession, you have to ensure that the road is paved for your successor. Has he been able to do this? Is blood at the end of the day thicker than water when it comes to the, BJ, the BJD's electors? Do they see, would they have seen perhaps, would they have gone along with another Patnaik perhaps? That is the question that we have to begin to ask ourselves when it comes to the BJD. I think it's just a matter of finding the right person to carry that baton forward. Uh, so that's, let's just park that mm. aside. But yes, very importantly for the UBT Sena in Maharashtra, it is very much an existential crisis because this election determines who the people believe are the real legacies of the ideology on which the Shiv Sena was built, which is Bal Thakre. And has the cadre transitioned from that sort of very Hindutva straight jacket to the more inclusive liberalism? that is championed by Thakre Jr., which is uh, Uddhav Thakre. Okay. That, that is the important. So again, no, here... I, I think one of the other th important things, uh, you went to mm. Maharashtra, I, I don't know how, how much you picked this up on ground, that in some pockets, some of the older Sena voters, uh, Uddhav does still have retain yes. a degree of sympathy. If in any phase we're going to see that sympathy play out, it's going to be in this phase. Yes. It's Mumbai, the six seats. It's really more than BJP versus Uddhav Sena. It is really Uddhav Sena versus Shinde Sena. Out of four the, seats. Yeah, out of the six seats, I think in yeah. four seats, yeah. it's a direct fight between Shinde Sena and Uddhav Sena. And I think really the winners in those seats will, will really determine, as, as Rahul said, the, the legacy of Vala Sahib Thakre. Who has, is it the Thakre name or is it Mr. Shinde and, and you know, his, his ilk who, mm. who carry forward the legacy of Vala Sahib Thakre? Uh, I really think whether it's Mumbai South, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, South Central. South Central is again a fantastic fight. It's again between Rahul Shevale and Anil Desai. It's, I, I can't think of a more prestige yes. battle 
for Shiv Sena and the future of Shiv Sena. Similarly with Bombay South. I mean, Bombay South is the most prestigious seat. Yeah, Arvind you, Savant, yeah, Yamani Arvind Savant versus Yamani, uh, Jadav. Yamani Jadav. Again, it's Sena versus Sena. So this, at, at least the Mumbai seats, the six Mumbai seats plus Kalyan. And, and yeah. Kalyan, of course, is the Chief Minister's son's seat. Uh, he, of course, is seeking a second term from there, Shri Shinde. Again, very, very prestige battle. So if Uddhav Thakre has to, you know, at the end of this election, say that, look, I am the inheritor of my father's legacy, he has to beat the Shinde Sena candidates uh, in these six seats plus the uh, Kalyan. No, so and that's nothing in it, really. From a vote share point of view, it's a yeah. very tight sort of even yeah. Stevens yeah. fight there. The problem here is about identification. And, and you know, the, the SSUBT, the, the Uddhav Thakre, has uh, two, two seats there. So they're really going to want to, you know, <laughs> prove... In fact, last time around, I think and, and don't six, forget, out, in eight months, there's going to be the assembly election. The assembly election. election. Yeah. So assembly. I think, you know, that really sets the tone for a for a huge... You, you also have the Mumbai uh, BMC elections which have been held in abeyance because the matter is sub right. and the courts have Absolutely. held it back. But the BMC elections could also be announced very soon and what happens in Mumbai perhaps. becomes very important. Uh, Smita Prakash, Shavid Ansari, earlier I was saying it's about betrayal versus betrayal. Whose betrayal was greater? Did Uddhav Thakre betray Bala Sahib's mandate and the Mahayuti and the voters' mandate and betray the ideology, core ideology? Was that betrayal greater or Ekna Chinde betraying Uddhav Thakre, is that betrayal greater? Smita Prakash. Is it, do you agree if we say it is betrayal versus betrayal and with betrayal well, sits with the, the sentiment of the voter? This is the first time that it will be put to test Anand in Maharashtra as to which is the larger betrayal mm. and which uh, one gets the sympathy vote, if at all. Uh, and does sympathy translate into vote? Because uh, ever since uh, the split happened in the Shiv Sena, there's been no testing, like there's no BMC election which happened, which would give an indication, or any other election which would have happened at the ground level, which would have given an indication. So there were that, panchayat okay, elections. The there were some Sena. panchayat that elections and happened. some council so, elections uh, where the Shinde Sena did well. There were some panchayat elections and there were some council elections in some of the areas where the Shinde yeah. Shena did gain uh, some ground. The yeah. Shinde, again, uh, as I'm saying that BMC is the biggest test yeah. and the Absolutely. BMC election did not happen because, and also uh, on the ground, I think what you're going to see is, uh, I think somebody mentioned about uh, existential crisis uh, in, uh, in, the, in the show. And I think, yes, the regionals, including uh, the Senas, the two Senas, uh, the NCPs, the two NCPs, uh, in Maharashtra are having an existential crisis. You've also already seen Sharad Pawar saying that okay, we should uh, all regional should merge with the Congress. So that's that's a real existential crisis even before the Maharashtra elections were over. Then you saw uh, how um, uh, you had a Prime Minister sharing this uh, stage. Uh, you know, uh, in in um, uh, with the uh, what's his name, hmm. Raj Thakre. Raj Thakre. Uh, yeah. That sends out a very very strong message when he's out there and Raj Thakre endorsing uh, Prime Minister Modi. So you have those uh, things playing out. Uh, you had uh, uh, in the NCP, you had uh, Supriya uh, uh, Sule in the in the on the day of polling, going and visiting her aunt Ajit Pawar's mom. Hmm. So you know. These are complicated things which are playing out and it's going to, and you're showing BJT. That's also a kind of existential crisis. You're also seeing in Uttar Pradesh today, Sapa and Baspa, both of them, Samajwadi Party, Akhilesh finding out whether it, 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 he matters at all in the state. Because then when the state elections, some of them are saying he's holding his guns for the state elections. Uh, but you saw huge crowds yesterday in Phulpur, which could indicate either way, uh, the BSP sending out mixed signals. Mayavati on the one hand saying that, uh, asking her people don't vote for the Samajwadi party. But today, just before polling, she says that there is a mood for change. JDS in Karnataka, again, an existential crisis. Are they going to uh, subsume within the BJP? TMC, BRS, BRS uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Telangana existential crisis there. People are saying not more than one or two seats. That's it. TMC wants to win desperately and you're seeing literally violence on the streets which you're not even seeing in Kashmir happening in TMC and that's an existential crisis if at all. Hmm. Bengal poll violence is usually normalized but her attacking uh, 
traditional core Hindu institutions which find their roots in old Bengal itself. The, the, the Gaudiya Sampradaya uh, that is uh, ISKCON that draws its roots from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is again from Bengal. The Ramakrishna Mission finds its roots in Bengal and Mamta Banerjee has openly attacked these institutions and that itself is a departure and what does that symbolically or what does that messaging is a big question. Javed ji, your thoughts on uh, Uddhav, Balaz, Uddhav Thakre and this entire betrayal aspect? Will sentiment matter or, or perhaps who's, who's among the people who's actually working or as a voter discerning enough on ground, Javed? Look, if, if you talk to people and uh, if you just go back to what Chagan Bujwal said recently, mm. Chagan Bujwal has split from the BNSP, he's, he's, he's now in the Ajit Pawar faction. He believes that both, of, both Uddhav and Sharad Pawar uh, will, be, will gain uh, or at least as far as sympathy is goes, the people's sympathy is with them. They're, they're, they're generating a lot of sympathy on account of what has happened in the past few months. Mm. Chagan Budbal ought to know that. He's, he's very grounded apart from a lot of other things. A lot of the other hats that he wears, mm. he's also very grounded. So it's, it's not just a question of the survival existential crisis for UBT, but also for Eknath Shinde. Mm. Similarly for Ajit Pawar and Sharad Pawar. Just mm. for argument's sake, what if Sharit Pawar, if Supriya Sule were to lose Baramati? That would be a huge body blow to Sina Pawar, sir. Yeah. So, what, what if of the what if the Pawar faction of the NC, NCP really uh, uh, does mm. well? Then what happens to Mr. Ajit Pawar's politics and what happens? Mm. Because he's been waiting, waiting in the wings and, and he believes that what ought to have been rightfully is, his uncle just continued uh, mm. uh, continued from for as long as he has done, and and, and therefore time I his chances. So mm. it's not, a, and I don't agree that that there's an existential crisis. I don't agree with you when you say there's an existential crisis for TMC. Right. TMC may or may not win the number of seats it did last time. Maybe BJP may may or may not do better. Even if the BJP, for argument's sake, does better, TMC is not won't Great. walk or won't collapse like the Congress like the manner in which the Congress has collapsed in Uttar Pradesh. Hmm. TMC won't because Mamta Banji, one may or may not like her. Yeah, there, there, there's much that, you know, Mamta Banji can be criticized for, hmm. but she's a fighter. She, hmm. She's fought all the way. Look hmm. at the way she, she braved the odds against the CTN right. and the left there and she's come up the hard way. Hmm. So, so yes. I think there's an interesting hmm. sort of parallel, if you will. Uh, I, I agree with Javed Ansari. I don't think uh, TMC will fold up as a party even if, let's say, BJP gets more MP right. seats in Bengal than TMC does. What it will create problems for, though, is this whole leadership transition in the TMC itself. With this yeah. whole thing about transferring okay. the leadership from Mamta Banerjee to Abhishek Banerjee. And the parallel, again, is with the BJD. Of course, there's no, there's no blood relation, really, between Mr. Naveen Patnaik and Mr. Pandian. And, of course, this whole outsider tag, we'll have to wait and see. I, in fact, asked Mr. Pandian this uh, in, a, in, mm. in, a, in our Rising Bharat event a couple of months ago. Uh, about this, I mean, the only example, the, perhaps the, the most famous example I can think of an outsider who made it big in the politics of another state was that of MGR. And incidentally, Mr. Pandian is from that same state uh, and from that same place where MGR sort of built his political roots, uh, the Madurai belt. Uh, and he said that, look, uh, as far as I'm concerned and as far as the people of Odisha are concerned, I am one of them. You know, I speak their language. I've worked with them for the last 20 years. I'm married into Odisha. His wife is also a bureaucrat. Uh, who's, been, who, who's been serving the state for, for the last many years. So he doesn't consider himself an outsider. I think what this will also signal, uh, if, of course, the BJD does well, uh, is that the party itself, are there other claimants to the legacy? Are there other claimants to the leadership? Uh, if the BJD were to do badly, uh, whether it is in the Lok Sabha or even in the Assembly, then the knives will be out. Jai. But if the BJD were to win the assembly, and, and all the way, by, by the way, we were talking about Naveen Patnaik's legacy some time ago. I think if he were to win again, and by August of this year, he will cross Jyoti Basu as the longest yeah. serving Sorry. chief, chief minister, minister in the history of India. India. I don't think that is something anybody would have said about him 20 years ago when he made the political plan. Absolutely. And nobody had even given him a chance, even of one term. So what he's done for himself is commendable. But Zaka, here's the challenge for Mr. Pandian and not taking away from his ability. 
MGR was a mass leader because he was of a course. film star. Of course. He had public and he plied his wares in Tamil Nadu for many decades before he entered the political Correct. foray and he knew how to work with the masses. So there was a mass appeal already. With Mr. Pandian, he has administrative capability, but as Smita Prakash was saying, he's quite reticent. So that transition to becoming a neta, that's where the challenge will be for Mr. Pandian because he will have to come out into the fore and transform into a neta, neta per se. Both Javed Ansari and Smita Prakash have their hand up. Quick comments and then we'll take a break. Yes, Smita Prakash. Yeah, so uh, Naveen Patnaik has already beaten Jyoti Basu. He has to beat uh, Chamling. That Chum. is the uh, thing, okay. the change that will happen. And as far as Pandian is concerned, you know, when you say that Pandian is this outsider uh, who aspire, who might become a chief minister, we've had uh, outsiders or people born outside the state who have become chief ministers uh, uh, in the past. So uh, he won't be the first one to do that. Uh, MGR, as you mentioned, was not born. Jailalita was not born. Uh, MGR, in fact, is born in Kandy, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. uh, Jailalita was born in Mysore. Mysore. Uh, she wasn't born uh, there. And there have been other chief ministers also who were not born. Kamal Nath was not born uh, in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, there was Sucheta Kriprani, the first uh, chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, in my memory, uh, serves right. She was not born. Sheila Dikshit was not born uh, in Delhi. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal, uh, chief minister of Delhi, was not born in Delhi. He was born in Haryana. So th there have been instances, but of course you've not had a Tamil-speaking person who has been chief minister uh, anywhere else. So that, that will be a radical change uh, that will happen if he does. And as far as uh, him facing a, a, a kind of a, a rebellion, even if he wins, even if BJD wins, uh, there there is a sense of disgruntlement. It's all about that Odia pride, Odia Smita that everybody talks about. And that's the one that BJD, BJP is playing up. Hmm. So you, you believe that the outsider aspect and that card of a non uh, Odia speaking uh, person no, who he is coming there? No, no, in, he, the sense, in fact, he speaks very fluently. Yeah, I, I know. When I but say, in fact, it's yeah, the opposite. When there. I say that uh, born a Tamil and not yeah, yeah. Uh, an Odia born. Uh, no, as I was saying, that, that, that I think aspect, it's not she's really saying it's a factor, others are saying it's not a factor. I don't, I'm just think, saying it's I don't there. think the public so much is sort of connecting with that as much as the carder needs to sort of See, get rid at of the its end own of the day, uh, At the end of the day, that's a challenge that I hope Mr. Pandian and Zaka, you had that conversation with him. He accepts that he will have to transform into a neta and there is a road ahead. There is a but learning you know, curve for him acceptability too. acceptability in any transition... Uh, is something that that person has to negotiate for himself. Right. Let, let's ja, be honest. Ja, quick, quick comment from Javed Ansari. Yes, we've got some disturbing news about the Iranian president. We'll take that up uh, in a bit. Yes. Yeah. So we were talking of existential crisis. The one, the one party that is really facing a battle for survival is Mayawati's BSP. Mm -hmm. In look what they've been reduced to from kingmakers and queenmakers. She's now she's she's just about an also ran. She can't decide whether she is with the government or against, or, or, or against it, whether she's voting for, ch she wants a change or she wants the status quo to continue. She anointed her nephew, uh, clearly declared that he's, a, he's going to be, he'll inherit a political legacy. That guy went and blew his top and the very next day he was changed. She, that he's, she discovered, she suddenly discovered that he's not mature enough to take on the leadership and she's replaced him. So Mayavati is the one which is really... Mayavati did, mm. even the Congress did a bit better than Mayavati in UP, which is, you know, like uh, mm. climbing Mount Everest. Uh, so May Mayavati has a lot to think about and a lot to worry about because right. a lot of her weight has, vote has already drifted. It's only the jat of chunk which is with her. And this, her dictates are also now weakening. Interesting, so, interesting point. So more than Uddhav Thakre or uh, Sharad Pawar, the question will be for Mayavati. And since Power Centre in Uttar Pradesh is Lucknow, Brijesh Pathak has just come to cast his vote. Siddhant Mishra is right there. And we also have some disturbing news about the Iranian president who there was a helicopter crash that happened. It was a hard landing. Now we are given to understand that uh, President Riyadh Raisi has been confirmed dead. We'll get you more details after a very short break. Stay with us.